Hi guys, welcome to Bream Time. On this channel I show you underwater footage of my bream fishing sessions. Right now I'm fishing a diffusion boilie. The idea behind a diffusion boilie is that they should leak a lot of color so they really stand out on the bottom. Okay, so this is the diffusion boilie I want to show you and talk about. It's called the Fruit Beast. It has a fruity flavor, but if it's a beast or not, I'll let you decide yourself. I think that this boilie is interesting to talk about and show you guys for a couple of reasons. First, as this boilie leaks so much color, you can really see how the flavors spread in the water. From what I've seen, there are at least three different patterns in how flavors are spread in the water. One pattern is, as you see here, uh, you can see how it spreads more like smoke from a fire on a clear day. The flavor goes more or less straight upwards. I've always thought that flavors spread more or less evenly in the water. But after watching these diffusion baits, it's clear to me that is just not the case. Here you can see another pattern. I call this uh, the creeper or a creeper pattern. It follows the bottom and goes away in one direction. By the way, the weather was really nice on this occasion. Well, it started off really nice anyway, but uh, that would change. Well, about the creeper pattern again. My intuition is that this is the best version for bream fishing as it seems more likely that this will find the bream somewhere and, and lure them into the swim. Here is an observation about fishing bright pop-ups. Either you catch them quickly or not at all. In the first session I showed you I didn't catch any. Here the bream takes one look, comes back and picks up the bait. As pop-ups is such a risky business, either you catch them quickly or not at all, I would never go for pop-ups on two rods. Only one. This is a really nice fish. This is about um, as big as they get and as dark as they get in the lake. Yeah, I'd guess this fish is about three kilos, probably a little bit under. Um, I've caught slightly bigger ones. I've heard about people catching bream up to five kilos, but I've, I've never seen anything in that size. This is probably the part of fishing that I like most. If I would pick one moment that I like most, this is probably the one. When you release the fish and you see it swim away. Do you ever call by? I think that all venues has its own challenges, and here is mine. I have loads of hungry roach. That makes it really hard to predict how much particles and ground bait I should uh, put out there so the bream stays but don't get overfed. My solution is that I always have at least some big particles or boilies so I know that something is out there attracting the bream. In this case I had about 
five orange boilies. Uh, boilies in the same color but uh, not the same taste as my hook bait. But as you see yourself, they move the bait on the bottom. So even if they don't pick it up, they might, they might move it on the bottom. Here is another example of catching quickly or not at all. I won't bore you with showing you episodes of not catching, but here the bream comes in from the right, takes one turn and then picks up the bait. Still a sunny and very nice day. Here is another aspect of the roach challenge. Even that they might not be able to pick up the bait, they might still hook themselves accidentally. In this case I didn't touch the rod because there were only two beeps on the alarm so I decided to let it be. At this point the weather changed quickly and we all know what rains means on a sunny day. That's really good for fishing. Here I wasn't sure if I had lost the fish uh, as I did with what I thought was a bream but uh, later turned out to be a roach. But uh, when the uh, line went again, I realized that uh, the fish was caught. So to summarize, uh, we've seen the scent of the boilies go away straight upwards, which I call the uh, well, straight up pattern or the crawler where it creeps away on the bottom. But what does that mean? I have to admit that I'm not sure. Possibly this means nothing at all. Over time these effects evens out. Some fish swims by and stir things up and, and you're good. But it might also be something that's worth taking seriously. Feel free to share your thoughts about this below. Okay, so to round things up, I wanted to say something about the bait that I'm fishing in this episode, the Fruit Beast. Uh, on the one hand, I don't think that the smoke effect really do that much for the fish. Uh, but it uh, taught me a couple of new things that I haven't thought about earlier. On the other hand, I did really catch a lot of fish on this bait, so if you're looking for something new this might be an option for you to consider this is a very nice combination sunshine and rain at the same time and this is my happy face <laughs>